In this video, we're going to learn about rate laws. Chemical kinetics is a field of chemistry that deals with the rate of a chemical reaction. That is how quickly a chemical reaction takes to complete. To measure the rate of a chemical reaction, we can measure the change in the concentration of the reactants with respect to time. Some chemical reactions are quite simple and the rate of the chemical reaction is always going to be the same no matter what the concentration becomes. Other reactions are a little bit more complicated and the rate is going to change depending on the concentration of the reactants. So what are we going to learn in this video? Well first we're going to learn what a rate law is and then we're going to learn three different types of reaction orders and we're going to learn how to recognize these reaction orders based on experimental data and graphs. So first, what is a rate law? Well, a rate law is a mathematical expression that shows how the rate of a chemical reaction depends on the concentration of those reactants. And sometimes the rate is dependent on the concentration of the reactants and sometimes it is not. So let's look at a couple examples. In this first example, we have this chemical reaction right here and we only have one reactant, that's the N2O gas. Now, as we graph the concentration of N2O versus time, we could see that the rate, we get a straight line. That would be the slope of this line would be equal to the rate. And so the rate never changes no matter what the concentration is. The concentration is going down, but it still just decreases at the same rate. Now over here we have a different reaction and we have once again one reactant, a different one this time, N2O5 gas. And as the concentration is graphed versus time, we can see that as there is less and less of the N2O5, the rate begins to slow. And you can see the slope of the line gets less and less and less. And so this one is dependent on the concentration. And so the rate law is a mathematical expression that's going to describe this uh, effect of concentration on the rate. And here's how we write the expression. So this is what the expression looks like. This rate law matches up to this chemical equation, and this rate law matches up to this chemical equation. So let's describe the different parts of this. So first of all, rate is how quickly the reactants are going to disappear over time. And then K is called the rate constant. This constant is going to be specific to how that reactant disappears over time, and we'll get to that a little bit later. N right here is called the reaction order. And the reaction order must be experimentally determined. It's going to be a whole number integer, starting with 0, going to 1, 2, and so on. And then over here we have the concentration of the reactants. And that's these square brackets right here represent concentration of whatever is inside. Now there's a couple key things to remember. First of all, the rate law depends only on the concentration of the reactants. We never really care about the products. And then the order must be experimentally determined. Now what if there was more than one reactant? So here's just a sample of some sort of reactant plus another reactant makes these products over here. Well, we would include both reactants in the rate law. And our rate law would look like this. And so both of the reactants are going to affect the rate differently because they each have their own order. So let's get to what this order means. So the reaction order determines how a reactant concentration is going to affect the reaction rate. And we're going to look at three different orders. We're going to look at zero order, first order, and second order. First with zero order, the concentration of the reactant will not affect the rate. And N would be equal to zero. That's why we call it zero order. And with first order, the concentration of the reactant is going to affect the rate directly. And so N is going to be equal to 1, so that's first order. And so that means if the concentration is doubled, then the rate will also double. And then second order, the concentration changes the rate to the power of 2, and so N equals 2. Now this one especially is going to take some explaining, so let's get to that. Let's first start with zero order. So here's an example of a zero order reaction. This is the one we looked at previously where we have N2O2 gas reacting to form nitrogen gas and oxygen gas. Now here's the rate law. We have the concentration of the reactant raised to the power of N. This is the order. Now let's look at the data because we can determine the order by looking at the graph and also looking at some experimental data. To determine the order of a reaction, what we need to do is we need to complete this experiment and we need to time how long it takes. That's what this rate is. We determine how the concentration changes with respect to time. And so we could see the first experiment, the concentration of N2O, 
is 0.4 molar. That's 0.4 moles per liter. And it moves at a rate of 1 times 10 to the negative 3 molar per second. That's how much it's decreasing every second. And we've graphed that over here. Now, as we change from experiment 1 to experiment 2, we've cut the concentration in half. We've gone from 0.4 to 0.2. And if we look at the rate, the rate has not changed. I do the same thing between 3 and 2. If you look at this difference, we've actually doubled from reaction 3 to reaction 2, double the concentration, but the reaction rate stays the same. And so zero order means that no matter what concentration we start at, the rate will always remain the same. And this is also represented in this graph. When we graph the concentration over time, we should get a straight line. Now we could look at the slope of this line. We can look at it right here at the top and right here at the bottom and slope will be the exact same. You can see our triangles are the exact same size here. And so if we were to graph the rate over time we would get a nice straight line. That would be the slope um, unchanging because the slope never changes and so we'd always get the same slope. The rate doesn't change. So since this is zero order n is going to be equal to zero and so I can write the rate law and anything raised to the zero power is just going to be equal to one and so we just end up with rate is equal to k and so this rate constant k is actually the slope of this line whenever we get a straight line like this we can take the slope of it and that is going to be equal to k okay so let's look at a first order reaction now so here's a different reaction and we have this gas becoming nitrogen dioxide gas and oxygen gas. And here's the rate law. So we have the rate and the concentration of the reactants raised to the nth power. Now we want to figure out what order this is. So here's our data. Once again, we have the experimental data. And we're changing the concentration between these different reactions. Now, even before I get to this, I can look at this graph right here, looking at how the concentration of the reactant changes with respect to time, and I can see that it is not constant, and so I know this is not zero order. Now, zero order means whatever happens to the concentration of the reactant is going to happen to the rate. And so if I look at experiment three compared to experiment two, we've doubled the concentration of the reactant. And if I look over at the rate, we've doubled the rate. Now I can move to experiment two and experiment one. Once again, we double the uh, concentration and we double the rate. Now we can look over at the graph again and I can look at the slope at the top and compare that to the slope at the bottom. And we could see that the rate definitely decreases at the, as the reaction progresses. Now if we were to graph the rate versus time, we'll see that we get a steady decrease in the rate with respect to time and it's a straight line and so we can take the slope of that line and come up with k. Now since this is first order n is going to be equal to 1 and so the rate uh, law can be written as the constant times the concentration raised to the power of 1 and so there is our rate law. Now this graph is pretty important, the second one that we drew and instead of just graphing the rate here on the y-axis what we can do is we can take those concentrations of N2O5 from this graph and we could take the natural log of those y values and we'll get a straight line. This is the first test we can do to determine if a reaction is going to be first order. Um, if we don't get a straight line in the first place, first just take the natural log of those y values and if you get a straight line then we know that it's first order uh, and we can know that that value for n is going to be 1. So finally second order. So I chose a reaction that has two reactants here. So here's the rate law. See, both reactants are in the rate law. First thing we have to do is determine, do both of these concentrations affect the rate? And looks, let's look at the experimental data. So in this case, you can see we have four experiments, and we are sometimes holding the concentration constant for one of the reactants while we're changing the other one. Uh, so that we could see how does just changing one reactant affect the rate. So let's start with the concentration of carbon monoxide here, CO. And this, between first experiment and second experiment, we've held the concentration of NO2 constant, and we have, uh, between the second one and first one, doubled the concentration of carbon monoxide. And if I look at the rate, the rate has not changed. So this reaction would be zero order with respect to carbon monoxide. So M right here would be equal to zero. 
basically that means that I can eliminate this part of the expression because it's not going to affect the rate in any way. Now let's look at the rest of our data here. Let's go all the way down to experiment 4. We had the concentration of NO2 at 0.1 and then experiment 3 we've doubled it to 0.2. And if I look at the rate, it has changed from 2 times 10 to the negative 2 to 4 times 10 to the negative 2. It's gone up uh, double. Now this isn't quite enough to determine the order. I'm going to have to look at the next set of data as well. So experiment 3 to experiment 2, we've doubled the concentration of GAN. And this time, it's gone up by 4 times. So it kind of looks like the order is not staying constant. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to compare these two and we're going to pair these two rates. And so what we can do is we can take uh, the 2 times 10 to the negative 2 and the 4 times 10 to the negative 2 and see how we could change it to get to the next step. That is, how do we go from here to here, and then how do we go from here to here? So if I were to square this number right here, I would end up with 4 times 10 to the negative 2. And if I were to square this number right here, I would end up with 16 times 10 to the negative 2. And so there is my order, it's right there. So this would be raised to the second power, that's going to be uh, n. And so this is a second order reaction. Let's take a look at the graphs. So here is graphing the concentration of carbon monoxide versus time. It's a zero order reaction. And here is the NO2 versus time. You can see it's a pretty significant decrease in the rate. And so the rate law would look like this, where we have uh, a second order reaction with respect to NO2. Now we can also tell the order just by looking at the graph. Now here's our first graph. We can see that the rate is not constant. So what we can do is we can do our first test. That is we take the natural log of the concentration and graph it with respect to time. If we get a straight line there, then we know that it is first order. But we won't. We'll get something like that. And so what we do is we then take the inverse of the concentration with respect to time. And in this case, because it's second order, we will get a straight line. And we'll get something like this that's sloping upwards like that. And k will be equal to the slope of this line right here. Whenever we get the straight line, that's going to be k. All right, so let's summarize that. In a zero order reaction, the concentration will not affect the rate. And so rate is going to be equal to the rate constant k. In a first order reaction, the concentration will affect the rate. And we have the concentration raised to the first power. And in a second order reaction, the concentration will affect the rate. And we have the concentration raised to the second power. So did you learn everything in this video? Well, if you did, you learned how to write a rate law, and you also learned the different orders of reaction. You learned that we can get a straight line in a zero order reaction if we graph the concentration versus time. We get a straight line for a first order reaction if we graph the natural log of the concentration versus time. Finally, we get a straight line for a second order reaction if we graph the inverse of the concentration versus time.